Good day, geographers, and welcome to another lesson in our geography lecture series. I am your lecturer, Donovan Ratchery. Today we're going to be looking at mangrove wetlands in the Caribbean. Mangrove swamps or mangrove forests are coastal wetlands found in the tropical and the subtropical regions characterized by halophytic or salt-loving trees and shrubs growing in brackish that is slightly salty to saline or salty tidal waters. These wetlands are often found in estuaries where fresh water meets salt water and are infamous for their impenetrable maze of woody vegetation. In other words, students, if you end up in the middle of a mangrove swamp, chances are you're going to be stranded for days. You might even get so lost and stranded that you will be that you'll probably die in there. So try not to get entangled in the middle of a mangrove swamp, okay? The vegetation tends to be mixed tolerating both fresh and salt water. Their roots are stilted, growing downwards. In addition, their leaves are leathery. One good example of this is the Great Morass in Jamaica. Now, it's also known as the Black River Morass, and it's one of the largest, if not the largest, wetland area in the Caribbean. But you can research that to be certain. Here we have a photograph of a mangrove forest or mangrove swamp. And here is another one. Notice how the trees are very close to each other. And the roots, those are what we call stilted roots. They're actually stilted, high above the water. These are areas across the world where you're going to find mangrove forests. As you can see, we have mangrove forests along the east and west coast of South America. You can also find them bordering basically all Caribbean countries and along the east and west coast of Central America. You can also find them also on the north coast of South America. East and West African coasts also have mangrove forests as well as in the Pacific Ocean islands and bigger and the biggest island there Australia as well as along the Asian coast also have mangrove forest. If you notice, they're all within the tropical belt and that is between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Here we have the different zones of mangrove forest. So you have the coastal zone, these are the mangroves that are actually um, closest to the sea. They're in, they're more um, in deep, deep in the, in the water. And in the middle zone, you also have another set of mangroves that are actually a little further away from the water, but they are still um, affected by the high tide of the water. And as you can see, that is the reason why they have stilted roots, so that they can stay above the water and stay stable. Further back, the inland zone have mangroves that are not as affected by the tides, but are still um, somewhat in contact with the water. The Caribbean boasts of some of the most diverse swamps in the world. Mangrove swamps, a major community of living, thriving organisms, lie in the hundreds of miles of twisting rivers and creeks along our coast. This is 
magnificent canoe country. Swamps are a type of wetland dominated by woody plants. There are two main classes of swamp, forested swamps and shrub swamps. Shrub swamps are the type of swamps found here in the Caribbean and feature mostly shrub vegetation such as dogwood and mangrove. They are found along slow-moving streams and along coastal areas in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Mangrove swamps are defined by salt-tolerant trees and shrubs which can tolerate the harsh conditions of the brackish waters and salty tidal waves. Here in the swamp, many people see the water as being dirty or smelly. The color in water here in the swamp is actually linked to a chemical called tannic acid that's in the leaves of the mangrove trees. So when these leaves fall off and they decompose, tannic acid is released and it colors the water brown. The smell associated with mangrove swamps is hydrogen sulfide gas. This is produced by the decomposing bacteria living in the oxygen for sediments in swamps. Hydrogen sulfide has a characteristic rotten egg smell. The hanging roots of the red mangrove act as a sediment track. It works basically like a sieve. Then we get sediments washed down like in heavy rains. Those become trapped in the mangrove roots and basically the sediment accumulates right there in that base. As more sediment accumulates, more trees fall off, sticking to the new sediment and the land slowly increases, the land area and the coastal environment slowly increases. Mangrove swamps are definitely a natural one of the Caribbean. Man the link between mangrove swamps, seagrass beds and coral reefs is so vital and precious to the entire marine ecosystem that without mangroves, the reefs would collapse, the, the seagrass beds would collapse. There would be no ocean life without mangrove swamps supplying nutrients and supplying nursery grounds for these marine organisms to, to grow up, to spend the vulnerable part of their young lives in a protected place like a swamp. It's a true natural wonder. It's a, a place, a safe habitat where migratory birds can land to escape the hunters. Mangrove trees dominate Caribbean wetlands because they can survive in both salt and fresh water. They develop in protected areas like bays, lagoons, or estuaries. Red mangrove, black mangrove, and white mangrove are the three types of mangroves typically found in the tropics. The red mangrove is easily recognized by its unique arching roots. Black mangroves, which grow more inland, have roots that project upward, supplying plants in submerged soils with air. Unlike the other two, white mangroves have no exceptional root structures. As the mangrove root system grows, it becomes more tangled, extensive, and close to impenetrable. It acts like a sieve, with bits of seaweed, dead organisms, leaves, practically anything that can be carried by water, collects and gets trapped. Flushed by the ebb and flow of the tide, mangrove swamps are constantly refueled with nutrients carried by freshwater runoff from the land. This shifting world of mud and sand is home to a bursting population of creatures, some of them rare and endangered. So now this brings us to the next phase of our lesson, and that is to find out what are the various types of mangroves in the Caribbean. Well, in the Caribbean, there are actually three types of mangroves. We have the red mangroves, we have the black mangrove, and we also have the white mangroves. The red mangroves, commonly known botanically as Rhizophora mango, is located closest to the sea. Their roots are submerged at high tide, and it is through their roots that they perform the process of reverse osmosis, which is where they use magnesium ions to remove the salt, which enable them to survive in the salt water kind of environment. Their long roots, which are the stilted roots, help them to stay sturdy and anchored in the soft muddy sediments. The roots trap sediments which helps to stabilize the coastal environment. And let me give you one instance as to what this means. Usually near mangrove swamps you have coral reefs now the thing about coral reefs is that they depend upon clear oxygenated waters reason for this is that when the water is clear it allows for sunlight 
to reach the coral polyps, which are the organisms that live on the reefs and that helps to build up the reefs. Within the coral polyps, you have zooxanthellae, which is actually an, an algae that benefits the coral polyps or helps the coral polyps to survive. Zooxanthellae depends on the sunlight to perform photosynthesis, which allows the zooxanthellae to provide the coral polyps with all the nutrients it needs to survive, as well as to give it its beautiful colors or array of colors that the coral reefs are characteristics to know. But the thing is, when the water gets too much sediments in it, it becomes cloudy or murky, dirty, all right, unattractive. And this murky condition absorbs all the oxygen in the water, killing the coral polyps. It can also um, block out the sunlight, which prevents the coral polyps to survive as well. Because remember, zooxanthellae, which is the algae in the coral polyps, depend on the sunlight for photosynthesis, which is necessary for them to provide the nutrients to the coral polyps in order for them to survive and to continuously build up the coral reefs. Next we have the black mangroves, otherwise botanically known as Avicennia germinans. Now these species are found further inland. They're actually the second set of um, mangroves that are behind the red mangroves. They're further inland away from the sea. And the way how they survive is that they actually secrete the salt onto their leaves or through their leaves. Now the roots have hair-like structures known as pneumatophores. The pneumatophores or pneumatophores actually transfers oxygen to the roots and this enable them to survive. The roots of the black mangroves are not as long like those of the red mangroves though. Finally, the white mangrove, Langucalaria racemosa. Well, the white mangroves are found further inland. They are the third set of mangroves, but are further inland behind those of the black mangrove. They're the third set of mangroves, even more further from the sea itself. Just like the black mangrove, they secrete salt through their leaves, and that is how they survive. So here we have a demonstration of the different types of mangroves. As you can see, the red mangroves are at the front. They're basically in the sea. They're closest to the sea. And then to the middle zone, you have the, red, the black mangroves that are further away from the sea. They are still affected by the high tides. And that is the reason why their roots um, look like that, so that they can try to stay above the water. Finally, the white mangroves are furthest away. They are least affected by the tides or the waters for that matter, but they are still absorbing salt water. So just like the black mangroves, they have to secrete salt through their leaves in order to survive. Why are mangrove wetlands important? Oh boy, they are. Coastal protection. The dense roots trap sediments. Remember what I explained to you about the sediments as to where the coral reefs are concerned? Right, that is one instance. But let us look at some other reasons why. Mangroves protect the coast against hurricanes, storm surges, and tsunamis. In other words, students, during hurricanes, what mangroves do, they actually cut down the speed of the wind so that the mangro so that they um, the hurricane winds are not as um, powerful after they cross the mangrove. They break the wind speed of the hurricane. They also cut down the storm surge. Without the mangrove, the storm surges can create havoc along the coast. But with the mangroves, what happens is that it cuts down the power of the storm surges created by hurricanes, all right, which are waves created by hurricanes. 
also tsunamis are also the power tsunamis are reduced as a result of the presence of mangroves along the coast so without mangrove sediments will wash will wash away quickly from the coast right so they help to preserve the coast in that way as well as tsunamis and storm surges will cause great damage along the coastal areas ecological importance as you saw in the video the the mangrove forest is a habitat for all living creatures as well as um, fish as well or any other marine creature they are breeding grounds for different types of marine creatures yes a lot of fish go there to spawn all right and as well as turtles and other marine creatures it's a excellent area for them to spawn because you have no tides in there as well as um, you have a lot of nutrients in the mangrove swamp so it is it is breeding ground haven for a lot of marine creatures mangroves filter sediments and nutrients that would suffocate coral polyps and encourage algal growth which is detrimental to coral reefs let me explain the algal growth to you you see within the mangrove environment along with the sediments you also have nutrients if the mangroves are not there along the coast to filter out the nutrients as well as the sediments too much nutrients will go to the coral reefs and this can cause the growth of algae what algae does is that it takes away the oxygen that the coral polyps depend upon for survival all right and that can kill the coral reefs it will also attract creatures like starfish and sea urchins as well that is the algae all right it will attract sea urchins and starfish which can nest on the or rest on the coral reefs and kill the coral polyps and destroy the coral reef platform itself these are very dangerous creatures to the coral reefs and that is the reason why we need mangrove wetlands or mangrove forests along the coast so that all of these sediments um, are prevented from destroying the coral reefs as well as the nutrients and also to and also to allow for breeding grounds for more fishes to to um to spawn there are other um marine creatures to spawn there because we also depend on these creatures for food as well so here we have an illustration the top illustration that we have right here shows a mangrove swamp just off the coast all right and here we have the waves the strong waves coming in because of the presence of the mangrove the force of the waves are cut down so we don't have the waves affecting the coastal area here however the next illustration below the mangrove swamps are absent and because they are absent it means that look all that wave coming in towards the coast creating a lot of um, problems so you have flooding coastal flooding happening right there coastal erosion taking place all because the mangroves are no longer there so you can see it acts as a break water as well along the coast as we know mangroves are also a habitat for many different creatures whether marine creatures or land walking creatures so the next reason why mangroves are important is that they can spawn a tourism industry yes mangroves influence tourist industry because you tend to have mangroves being used as tourist attraction where tourists 
otherwise known as ecotourists they don't come here just for the sun sun and beaches they like to come for nature and one of and some eco tourists like to go to the wetland areas and see the exotic creatures that are there you know we talk about the the flamingos the different exotic birds as well as the different exotic um, marine creatures that are there including the crocodiles which are prime attractions in these areas and one good example of this is the black river morass otherwise known as the um the great morass in saint elizabeth jamaica it's actually a tourist attraction they actually have a safari going on there um you know and it takes in a lot of revenue for the local area as well as well as for the country all right so it's a very popular tourist attraction So here we have tourists on one of those um, safaris in the mangrove area. Typically not Jamaica. The one in Jamaica is more sophisticated than this. All right. But that is a good example of what is going on in mangrove areas when it comes down to tourists. Along with tourists too is that the mangrove swamps or the mangrove forests themselves, right, actually provide um raw materials as well as um as, as as well as food yes and they are also valuable to local um to the local communities that surround them did you know that there is a special kind of honey that can be attract that can be extracted from the mangroves yes there is a special type of honey that can be extracted from the mangroves and i don't know about it being done in jamaica but i know in other caribbean countries they actually can the people know a, a method of getting honey a special kind of honey not created by bees though but a special type of honey from the core from the from the 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 the, the mangroves all right that they actually use that they actually consume well as you can see it is all said and done we have come to the end of our lesson and i really do hope that you guys enjoyed the lesson and learned something new from this lecture series once again i'm your host your lecturer donovan ratry and thank you very much for you know taking the time out continue to love geography and work hard at the subject Take care, everyone. Have a great day.